Welcome everybody back to our next webinar here at JFT Brokers. Sorry for the echo here, but now everything is hopefully all right and you can hear me without any additional noise or something else. Yeah, my name is Stefan Friedrichowski, as always for those kind of webinars, which are a little bit more related to um, mathematics or statistics or trading strategies at all. So, you know, um, what kind of webinars you can expect if you see a webinar of Stefan Friedrichowski. And for the records, yeah, today we have the, uh, we have the 14th of June, 2017. So it's already half a year, uh, nearly over. Uh, that's a uh, half a year with Donald Trump, which is uh, sometimes a little bit extra, um, volatility for the markets, uh, but that is uh, definitely not the topic uh, for today. Yeah, you see that the uh, title today is stock markets and statistics. And I know, honestly, it sounds a little bit boring, but you will see that we can learn quite a lot simply by statistical considerations of price movements and finally statistical considerations of trading accounts and that gives us quite a lot additional insight into our trading activity and especially if we look to the price movements in, uh, within the markets uh, then we will see a lot of additional insight hopefully um, that uh, you share my opinion you that you share my thoughts um, but let's see so anyhow um, you see that I have already uploaded uh, the slides for today um, so you can download those slides via the go to webinar control panel um, and as always if there are any questions uh, after the webinar after you might have seen the recordings which you always find on the youtube channel of jfd brokers um, you can always contact me you see my email address it, i know it's a little bit complicated but maybe a screenshot helps you or you have downloaded the slides then you will find um, my email address as well and you can always name me by my first name just call me stefan uh, that's quite common and that's more easy good that's a little bit of introduction for today um but let's see what comes first of all i have always to show that slide sorry but um, today we are not talking that directly about trading strategies uh, um, like we did in the last couple of webinars but nevertheless all your information finally you take all your trades by your own and you do all trades uh, on your own responsibility that has to be mentioned at least once within that webinar so that's done let's go into the topic so what are the topics um, a little bit more in detail today the title stock market and statistic the statistics is already telling you something but i have to make some general remarks on um, the relationship of stock market statistics and you will often hear today the word randomness so random price changes random walker and i want to bring a little bit light into uh, that kind of topics and um, you will see that we look to the stock markets then from a different perspective more from the perspective of a so-called random walker and um, because that will be a later topic as well but uh, let me introduce already the random walker quite uh, right now so um random walk is um, a very easy discipline <laughs> let's uh, call it that way so a random walker you could be a random walker and what you do is always you throw a coin and uh, depending on uh, the outcome you do either a step forward or a step backwards and that you repeat as often you want and finally you have movements you have some distance from your origin and you will see that there's a lot of relationship between that random walker and the random walk theory related to our stock markets and we can take a few concepts out of the random walk to 
the stock markets and um, that will give us additional insight. Finally, we will draw the conclusion it's not that random as a random walker and that's quite good. If that would not be the truth, then we would not have any chance as a trader because the randomness, the random walker, we cannot beat by any kind of statistics, by any kind of trading approach. If everything would be purely random, there would be no chance for a trader. So, but the concept of random walk, we uh, will look to that and we will use it under different aspects, looking to prices, price changes, but finally looking to our trading account. And there will be a strong relationship just by conceptual reasons. So one important question is, um, of course, the randomness of stock prices. And if I say stock prices, I talk much more about uh, forex pairs uh, than indices, than uh, real stocks, but uh, I don't know a better wording for all that. So therefore, I call it always stock prices, um, although I, in most cases, mean forex or indices. Anyhow, one very important question is, how far is a typical moving movement after a certain time? That is something which is quite interesting and quite important for our trading activities. Because if we look for our stop losses and take profits, when if we look to our different time frames we trade, then we can use such an analysis of how far typically a price moves within a certain time that gives us already very good indication about where to set my stop loss and where to set my take profit and finally what we can see there is if you normally trade for example on h1 and now you want to change your trading activities to let's say uh, d1 so we know that there's a factor of 24 in time frame but now we can translate directly where to set typically stop losses and take profits and that purely by looking to the typical movements versus time you will see and finally yeah we take the concept of randomness takes the concept of trading results and we apply the same we have learned about price changes to trades within our account and you will see that there's a lot of things coming and uh, that we can um, directly learn a lot about our trading activities by applying those kind of rules good general remarks i mentioned um is there really a relationship between stock markets and statistics stock statistics always sounds already like randomness and honestly the first answer is directly there is absolutely no relationship so statistics no they statistics do not play any role within the prices of stocks or forex pairs why in principle the price itself it's always a result of what I now call simply supply and demand, or you know that there are a lot of people who want to buy, others want to sell at some certain price targets. And what the stock market is doing, it always matches those sell and buy orders. And whenever we have such a match, then we have a new price. So finally, the price is a result of that supply and demand. So offering, buying and selling, nothing else. And all those market participants behind, they act independently, at least in principle. Sometimes maybe not independent um, purely or only partly because a lot of people may be doing the same because of whatever reason maybe looking to the chart and seeing a resistance line or whatever but in principle 
all the people, all the participants act independently and they act rational. Okay, you see already, uh, if you would see me directly um, through a webcam, you would uh, see me smiling because that uh, rationality, mm, I would question sometimes. And I'm just talking about myself. Uh, you know, when you place orders, when you place trades, when you finish trades, when you open trades, maybe it's not always that rational, honest speaking. But in principle, the answer is yes, all the participants act rational. So why the hell, if everybody is acting independent, rational, and the price is simply a result of matching of orders, why should there any room for randomness for statistics like that? So in principle, the answer should be no. Absolutely nothing, no relationship, because everything is logic and not random. But now the bad. If we look to the prices, we will see, wow, there's a lot of random behavior. And we can describe that randomness very easy by simple statistical methods. And we will see exactly that randomness. So I will give you some examples on the next slides. Um, so still my, my first answer is valid, but the result, which is a price, is still to some extent quite random. And we can prove that and we will do it uh, during the webinar. Finally, what you will see is that uh, even trading results, look your, to your trading results. There's always, you open the next trade and the result of that specific trade is always unknown. If you would have um, a crystal ball and you would know exactly the next trade is a winner, then you will do it. But if your crystal ball would, would tell you the next trade is a loser, you would not do it. So um, the, every trade itself has an open outcome. And what we can uh, say is that there might be some, some probability for a specific result. And as we have talked about that already in the last couple of webinars, if we have a trading edge, probability advantage, then there should be a little bit, bit, a little bit more profit than losses with the next trade, but only statistically. So within our trading activities, the statistics concepts are quite obvious. But in order to get you a little bit more, what I mean, look to the randomness. I change a little bit the topic and um, for the next couple of minutes, because I will uh, enlarge, uh, I'll go um, to the full screen mode. Uh, so if anybody is uh, now um, um, posting anything here, I will not see it. Um, but let's see. So I have here an example. And within that example, I have three charts. And all those three charts are Euro, US dollar, on different time frames. All the Swiss charts, every chart is Euro, US dollar. But two things. You see, I have skipped the scales. So you don't have a time scale and you don't have a price scale within those charts. And the three different charts have been taken, or the pictures have been taken at three different time frames. So one chart is a D1 chart, another chart is an H1 chart, and finally we have one chart with an M5 chart. And now the question to you is, which one is what? So let's, let's name them or give them a number. So this one, where now my cursor is here, is chart number one. Maybe you can type right now what time frame is chart number one. Chart number two is the one here to the right and in the lower left corner we have chart number three. So the question still, what chart is which 
time frame. And I will talk a little bit more but so that you have a little bit of time to, to, to get your own opinion uh, of what chart is which time frame. But what is already obvious, it's not that easy. So in principle, we find similar behaviors or similar characteristics within all those three charts. Uh, we have uh, charts with long lines, uh, upwards or downwards, but we have those in every chart. So that's not an indicator for the time frame. So we have long series of green, uh, so upward trends on all the three charts downward trend, sideward behavior, reversal behavior, whatever you call it, we will find it in all those three charts. So it's honestly quite difficult to get the answer. Let me see whether I have here some, some answers within um, the chat. Oh, unfortunately not. So, but anyhow, um, I admit it's really difficult and to be even more um, direct it's impossible there's absolutely no clue no idea no di direct hint which chart is which time frame i can give you the answer but only because um, i've done those uh, uh, charts or i have done the screenshots within the chart so the first one is d1 second is uh, h1 and the final one here is m5 but there's no hint. So there's no indication, no indicator which can tell us which chart is which time frame. So the time frame is not visible within the chart without uh, x axis and the price axis. But what does it tell us? That tells us that the price changes, the price moves of the euro, US dollar have a specific feature. And that feature is called self similarity. I know now I'm getting really into mess here, but it's quite important to realize that and to, to come to that kind of conclusion that we have a self similarity within our charts. Maybe you have heard of that concept of self-similarity. Um, it's the same related to what is called fractals, or I give you a more, more easy example. If you get satellite pictures of a coastline, let's say Norwegian, and just forget a little uh, right now that you might see uh, some houses or ships or uh, some other indications of the length scale. I can promise you that there's no chance to get the length scale without any additional information out of the coastline. So such a coastline is self-similar as well. And that has a lot of consequences. So the random walker, and you will see, has the same features, the same um, concepts. So that is already a first hint of um, the self-similarity that stock prices have a lot to do with randomness. It's only an indication. It's not already... Um, a, com a confirmed conf uh, conclusion, but it's quite important. It's even important for our trading activities that we know that we cannot distinguish charts without scale. And even what you see here is that we have similar kind of movements, up and down movements on all the time frames, brings us to the next question. To the question, what is a typical price change after some minutes or hours and so on. So, and sorry for a few German words here, but it's uh, not uh, that important, but uh, they, those are within the chart. So what you see here is the Euro US dollar. And what I have done is um, I have uh, looked to all the data within 2014. And uh, it's 
that is an, only an example, but I can um, confirm that uh, this is valid for all the years, and we will see some additional chart later. And what you have here on the y-axis is the absolute price change. So it's not asking to the direction, show a lot or short, uh, upwards or downwards. No. What I have uh, what I have done here, I will want to describe you uh, first a little bit in a chart here. Um, let's um, enlarge one chart and uh, go to another um, position, maybe here. So what I have done is simply, I have asked myself the question from a specific close, from a certain close price of one candle here, I have asked hey, how far away is a close of one candle in the future, two candles in the future, 10 candles in the future, 20, and so on and so on. And then I have taken the average of all those candles. And the absolute price to move is now without a sign. So it's regarding less whether it's an upwards or downwards move. That averaging finally led to exactly that picture. And that picture is quite meaningful. Let me describe it a little bit more in detail. So after 200 minutes, which is about three hours, the typical price movement is 0.018. Okay, what does it tell us? For now, nothing. But... What you see, I have put a straight line here. And that straight line is um, a power law. And uh, you see the formula here. So, and you see an exponent, which is close to 0.5, which is the square root. So what does it tell me? So it tells me if I double my time frame, the typical price movement is only square root of two, that factor. Or in other words, if you are used to trade on H1 and now you want to go to D1, and that is a factor of 24, then all in the square root of 24 is close to five. So all price changes are typically a, fact, a factor of five higher and that is very important if you think about stop loss setting take profit setting so you can change your trading activities your trading behavior your trading setups but then you have to change stop loss and take profits as well and the relationship between the different time frames is simply a square root behavior, square root of time. And now the relation to random walk. Square root behavior is exactly the typical distance for a random walker after, for example, 100 uh, steps. And you ask the question, what is the um, distance the random walker has covered? Then it's exactly square root behavior. So that is a very severe hint about the randomness of the price changes because you can describe nearly that increase with time. You can describe it nearly with exactly the same formulas like the random walker. I know that the origin of all the movements have been that matching of orders within the order book but the outcome of what are the movements are simply square root time behavior which is quite close to random walk what is the difference now the difference is indeed the exponent so if i would have here a 0.5 that would be a perfect square root behavior and you see we have some deviations and we have especially deviations on the long run, not on the short one. That gives us an additional hint that we should not trade 
on two tall, uh, two small time frames, because within especially very short time frames, the randomness is even more pronounced than on long time frames, and that is really important for us being a trader. So if you start trading, don't trade on M1, don't trade on M5, trade from H4 upwards. Going down the time frames is much more difficult because of two reasons. One is the prices go more close to random, one. And the second reason is, you know, whenever you open a trade, you are always already in the minus because of the spread or spread and commission. So in order to at least um, gain those costs of trading, um, it's harder on small time frames. So what we see here is one example. Square root behavior, what can be seen here with, uh, by that straight line. But now let's do a different analysis. Let's do the same analysis, but now for S&P 500. So for stock markets, the real stock markets. In this case, it's an index, but anyhow. In principle, we see similar behavior, but if we try to figure out um, the, the, the exponent here, we will find a higher exponent more going to one. One would mean linear behavior. And that is already a very good hint that indices are much, much more trend-like. They show more trend behavior than forex pairs. That means if you, this linear behavior is, if you double the time, then you double the distance or the price change. And for sure, you have, you have exactly that kind of behavior if it's linear. So if now that exponent is more close to one, is an indication that we have a much closer, um, or we are much more far away um, from random behavior. So, and you find the same behavior for other uh, indices or for uh, real single stocks. So trend trading is therefore more attractive for indices than for forex, at least on medium time frames. On long time frames, D1, W1, so weekly, you can have trend behavior for Forex as well. And from time to time, of course, I know a lot of charts. I could um, show you examples that you will find tr trends even on smaller time frames, but they don't last long enough. So that tells us a lot. Indices have more trend behavior and Forex pairs, pairs have more random behavior in general. But what about different forex pairs? Just one ex um, one slide for that topic, and that gives you some additional uh, hints for your own trading activities. What you see within that chart is simply the same what we have done with euro US dollar, but now for in total 21 forex pairs. You see same behavior, and if you look for the exponent, it's once again close to square root behavior for all the forex pairs. But there's one, one additional conclusion we can draw out of the chart. The order here, the order of the legend here is in the order of magnitude. What does it tell you? If you ask yourself how many, um, and now the y-axis is percent, pri um, percent change of the price, then you can say after 300, and this, this time it, uh, it's hours, after 300 hours, the typical change of Australian dollar and Japanese yen is near to 3.5%. And on the other hand, 
if you look for euro swiss franc or euro british pound it's more than half of that that means on the other hand if you try to trade long-term behavior you should not go for euro british pound or euro swiss franc and honestly uh, i have been surprised by that analysis um, i would have expected the swiss franc here on the lower end but not the british pound versus um, euro but analysis is as it is and that we have here the same typical behavior and um, which can be described with the same loss and uh, square root behavior i can show you in a double logarithmic plot quite easily and now you see all the changes where this time are exactly linear that means they follow a power rule and that power rule is close to the exponent of the random walker so we have a lot of indications that that randomness within our price changes are much more maybe pronounced than you have thought about but still for us being a trader it means we have to look for deviations of that randomness and if we have indications for that for example power candles like in the last webinar then this is our trading chance the pure when the behavior we cannot trade there's on the other hand no chance to trade the total randomness since we are only close to the total randomness we have still a chance and i repeat the other conclusion if you look for big movements then you should prefer Australian dollar, Japanese yen, or Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, and so on and so forth, exactly following um, that sequence here. So, but back a little bit more to randomness at all, because I want to open your, your, your eyes with an additional chart. What you see here is something like a Euro US dollar, um, on a time frame and the price axis as always known but you will if you look to the chart you might already realize that it's not really the euro us dollar it's a simulated price and nothing else it's simulated exactly like random walk behavior what i want to share here with you is be um, that you realize looking to a chart like this you immediately do the standard analysis following technical analysis meaning you see sideward behavior trend behavior resistance lines whatever you can draw and out of your knowledge you will find within the chart in this chart but in this case technical analysis is meaningless so i i uh, i know that one would like to see something like an sks formation like here which is a topic out of technical analysis but for that price here it has no meaning absolutely no meaning the clue is our eye tries exactly to find those relationships within that picture so it's nothing else so and if we just do something like that a um, little bit more practically like here and you will later see i use the same excel sheet uh, twice what i have done here is yeah another simulation of that price and how is it um, done simply by a random number and always if that random number is above 0.5 i do a move with minus 0.01 and if the random number is below 0.5 i do a move uh, exactly to the opposite and what is the outcome exactly what you see here 
And if I press F9, I get a new simulated price. But be honest to yourself. Looking to that chart, you always try to interpret that. So we start here with uh, the first year, or one and a half year, with a very good downwards trend behavior uh, following a small channel, then a reversal here, upwards trend, and so on and so forth. But in this case, my, my verbal description is nonsense. There is no real trend. I see it, yes. I can confirm, but all the prices here, all the chart is random. So I question here a little bit technical analysis at all. And I know that um, that uh, that quite uh, that kind of statement um, maybe a lot of people don't like. And still I cannot prove that uh, technical analysis has no meaning. Uh, absolutely no, um, because I cannot, uh, the inverse um, conclusion is not right, it's not logical here. But at least I want to open your mind to see, hey, those kind of description, those kind of behavior, you can even find in a purely random driven chart. And honestly, those kind of charts, I have seen thousand examples uh, within uh, looking to the real Forex prices. They always look nice, but they always look quite the same than um, the pure random behavior, and they look quite similar to real prices in stock markets. Good. That is just to tell you uh, be careful, look for real trading edges, real trading um, probability advantages in order to find the right way for your own trades. Just looking to the chart is, at least for me, not enough. We need additional input for that, as we have done already in a few webinars before, and I will do a similar seminar, uh, webinars uh, for other trading strategies in the future. So that's just to open your mind uh, for those kind of behavior here. I mentioned that there's another topic directly related to um, trading and statistics, and that is the trading account itself. So normally we talk, for example, about win rate within a trading account uh, being one of the key figures a lot of people um, like. But also here I want to open your mind that win rate itself doesn't tell anything. We need additional two numbers in order that win weight is really telling a story. If you find something on in the web or Facebook or wherever, hey, I have a trading strategy with a win weight of 90%, isn't that superb? The answer is, I don't know. Maybe there's another guy with a win weight of 25% and maybe that is a real cool strategy. We don't know without the two additional numbers which we need here and that is the average gain the average profit and the average loss without those two numbers you can think about um, let's do it in euros um, if the average gain might be one euro and the average loss might be 20 euros you can easily calculate by your own that a win rate of 90% would be direct ruin of your trading account. Because if you have a win rate of 90% and your average profit is 1 euro, but your average loss is 20 euro, euro you would finally lose money. So that would balance a little bit more if I would have an average loss of 10 euros and one euro profit. Then we come close to break even. So we need two additional numbers. 
the average profit and the average loss. And now if we look for trading accounts, it's the reverse concept of random walk. If you have, for example, a trading account with a win rate of 50% and our average profit is 11 euros and, and our average loss might be 10 euros, then you know for sure that you will finally make money. But you will see just within an, um, a small Excel sheet, there might be phases where you um, are close to desperate. And that's only because of pure statistics. But we can describe a trading account with a concept of statistics and we can visualize ourselves possible outcomes. Let me show you that a little bit more in detail here. So if, for example, we have um, a trading account, as you see, now I switch here uh, to another Excel sheet and now I call it trading account. Um, and <clears throat> the concept of that Excel sheet is in principle absolutely the same. So I have a random number between zero and one here and I have a limit, a threshold here and I simply call average gain one and average loss, let's go for a loss and here profit. So now it's a little bit more uh, English here. Um, and we have a risk of for a trade of, a, for example, 10 euros. So in this case, it's quite easy. Um, in 50% of all our trades would be 10 euros profit and 50% would be 10 uh, euros loss. If I would ask you now what is the expectation value of that trading strategy of that trading account, Okay, the answer is already here on the screen, but I think you know directly the answer and that the, the expect from well, expectation value here is simply zero um, because the average loss and the average profit are the same and we have a 50% win weight. So that means after 1,000 trades, we should still have exactly 1,000 euro. Okay, but now let's look what we have here. And we have here 1,000 trades, and that is already another hint for our trading accounts. If you might have done 20 trades up to now, you cannot draw any conclusion out of 20 trades. And even 1,000 trades might be not enough in order to judge, to draw a final conclusion to your trading account. Look to that Excel sheet here. After 1,000 trades, I'm about at 600 euros. So I will, my losses have accumulated to 400. And that is only because of statistics. I can now get a new chart, this one or this one. And always I just press here F9, which gives a new sequence of random numbers. And you see what changes we have within our possible trading account. And now let's do it a little bit other. Let's go for a known profitable strategy like this one here. Now we have a win rate of 53%, still Profit, average profit is equal to average loss in my case here. So my expectation value per trade is now 60 cent or after 1000 trades, I should have an account of 1,600 euros starting with 1000. And this example here even ends at a little bit above 2000 euros, but now Let's go for another statistics. And I always don't know what the result comes when I press F9 here. So let's take this one here and think about your, your own and what you are doing within 
your own trading activities. Let's take this example. You do the first 100 trades here. After those 100 trades, you have not earned a single euro. It might be that you think, I need another strategy. I need a better one. But you have a very good one. The only thing is, you are not waiting long enough. Finally, it goes upwards. But there might be even worse examples. I hope I get one by pressing F9 here. Um, let me see. Now this one is perfect. All the, the, the charts you have seen are following the exact same statistics with given numbers of win weight, average profit and average loss. But look now what happens here. You do the first few trades and you, you, you gain a little bit. But now after 100 trades, you are at around 800 euros. I think most of us would draw the conclusion, I need another strategy. It's not working well. And at that point, someone would change his trading behavior. But look what would have happened if one would follow the exact same statistics later. Account goes upwards, exactly like we want to have our accounts. So don't understand me wrong. It does not mean that whenever you, you encounter losses within your trading account that I uh, say, hey, wait, wait, do more trades, uh, then finally it will go upwards. No, that's not my message here. My message is get those numbers for your own trading activities and then simulate possible outcomes out of your own statistics and then you will see there are huge deviations following exactly the same principle statistics. And then you get an impression of what might happen with your account. I've done here another Excel sheet to illustrate that a little bit more. So what you see here is, uh, it's quite colorful, yes, <laughs> but what you see here is simultaneously 100 equity curves. All the equity curves follow the same statistics, so the same numbers. Win weight, in this case, 27. Uh, average gain, 3. Average loss, minus 1. And you see what happens. There are lots of accounts which are, even after 1,000 trades, still in the minus. And that is only the outcome of statistics. So if I would change the number for uh, break even, meaning 25, um, then you see, okay, uh, we have equally um, number upwards, equally number downwards, and in principle, we cannot expect any profits. But you see that if we are already inherent profitable like this one here. Even then, there's a certain amount of trading accounts would, which have a loss after 1,000 trades. Once again, don't understand me wrong. In our own trading, we cannot directly set the win weight. We can set the relation between possible take profit and possible stop loss. But we cannot set, like within that Excel sheet, the wind weight, the final wind weight. And it does not mean automatically if you have a risk reward ratio higher than one, then you will automatically gain profits. No, that's not the right conclusion because it depends on your wind weight. And it's even worse. If you do a little bit more math on that, you will see that if you have higher risk reward ratios, then your risk of ruin, so meaning your account goes too much to the minus, 
uh, increases a little bit more than um, on the other side. But anyhow, that is not the topic for today and it will be a little bit more uh, mass needed here. What I want to tell you is here, look for your own trading activities and look what is your typical win weight, your typical profit and your typical loss. And then use, for example, those Excel sheets and simulate trading accounts following the same statistics and this will open your eyes to see what might happen even after 1000 trades i know that all of us we want to have a trading strategy doing uh, maybe 30 trades and have doubled our account yeah that's perfect that's superb but i can tell you there is no strategy which can do exactly that on a long run and I emphasize on the long run. There might be, with some luck, some lucky trades, some lucky punches, so you get exactly that kind of result. But that is random as well. So don't look for that. It's impossible. If it would be possible, you would earn that much money, which um, is simply impossible and there are other reasons for that why that is impossible but even if you have finally a strategy generating a slight edge a slight probability advantage even then from time to time you have to wait a little bit longer until you get really to the upside here and even if you are on on a drawdown phase if you have still the right trading strategy, then you can expect that it will change just by time. So that is the aspect of random walk, but now not with the same 50% uh, numbers here, and trading accounts. So you see a lot of similarity here as well. So back to our final conclusions. I know. Today, we have made a webinar which is a little bit more mathematically orientated and a lot of statistics. But what has been the topic? Stock markets and statistics. And they have a lot of similarities. And I make the, um, the remark here, unfortunately, because that is exactly what we face by our own trading activities, that from time to time, everything is too random in order to be traded well but we will find and we find those deviations we talk about black swans in the previous webinar uh, power candles those are deviations which mm, do not follow the pure random behavior and those price movements are exactly those ones which we can use as our trading opportunities and what you have learned additionally here today is that you can describe even your own trading account by statistical methods like win weight average profit average loss and those three numbers are extremely good key figures in order to help to understand your own trading account and your own trading activities because those three numbers um, enables or they, they offer the possibility that you can simulate trading accounts equity lines and then compare those with your own and if you are still within that cloud i would say then wait i if you are out of that cloud then you have to rethink about your trading strategy so that's what I wanted to present today, I know it's a little bit more statistics, a little, a little bit more theoretical, but it helps a lot in order to understand the market. Think about the typical price movement versus time in order to find the right stop loss values and the right take profit values and learn about or draw the conclusion about the square root behavior with time, which immediately, um, 
enables that you can switch between different time frames and uh, knowing what you have to do with your stop loss values and your take profit values. So that helps a lot and you will see there's a lot of more which can be learned about stock markets and statistics. But that was the first webinar on uh, that topic. The next will be a little bit more directly trading related once again. But from time to time, we will have additionals here as well. Hope to see you again. If there are any questions, if you want to have those Excel sheets, I, no problem. Just send me an email to s.friedrichowski at JFD Brokers. I can share those uh, Excel sheets with you. And if you have any other question, of course, don't hesitate. Just send me an email. On the other hand, have a good uh, evening. We know uh, we might have some stock uh, price changes within four minutes because we have the Fed interest rate decision at uh, 8 uh, p.m. German time. Let's see what comes. Uh, but we have had already a big move today. So the second move is maybe in front of us. So always good trades and see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.